The Mel Hurry Show and Mel Hurry Films stand with the WGA and SAG-AFTRA. All promotional interviews will be based on non-union members only until after the strike has resolved. Welcome to the Mel Hurry Show, when we talk all things film, media and entertainment. Hi everyone and welcome to the Mel Hari Show. So today I am interviewing some very special guests. So I'm talking to Robert James, who is the filmmaker for the documentary, the, um, the unabridged Mrs. Vera's Day book, along with both of the stars, David Faulkner and Michael Johnston. Thank you so much for joining the call. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of, I guess I'll probably start off with yourself, Robert. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, about this amazing documentary and how it came to be? Well, the documentary came about um, from the last film I made. And one of the people that was, was part of that film said, you should make a documentary about Mrs. Vera. Yeah. And I, I'd never heard of Mrs. Vera. And so I got a hold of Michael and went over and met him at his place. And just so you know, and you probably saw it in the film, both of their apartments side by side um, are just exploding with color. So I was right away intrigued. And then Michael showed me um, daybook photos. Yeah. And they were so fantastic pictures of Mrs. Vera um, that I wanted to know more. And we we spent about three or four hours just talking about it. They were getting ready to march in pride. I was getting ready to travel. But I, I said, you know, I want to send my crew to the pride parade and capture this spectacle. Yeah. And so we did. And that's where the journey began. Amazing. And I guess for yourselves, um, Michael and David, like, what was that like to be approached to do this documentary? Was it something you were quite anxious about, first of all, or were you, did you just embrace it? Um, well, it's like, it was, <clears throat> um, it was incredible to be asked to be the subject of a film. Um, we have a kind of a somewhat public presence here, but it's, it's, even people here who like us don't really know what we're about. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful to have a film that really kind of breaks down. It helps them see what they're liking and in, in what they're they're seeing uh, with what we do. Um, so having the film made is an absolute, um, you know, game changer for us because um, we just didn't think it would ever get told or if it did, it would be like a, a student film project or, or something that was just, you know, more introductory um, instead of this really polished, you know, complete story that, you know, focused on our life far more than than, than I would have just out of modesty. Um, uh, so it's it's been great in those terms. Yeah, yeah I really enjoyed it, too. It's uh, it's, it was very unexpected. Uh, but when I talked to Robert, I kind of knew I was like, OK, this guy gets it. He knows where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. And I had seen his other film, Rumination, um, and I loved it. You know, and lo and behold, I got a call from the guy who made a film I really liked, like a week later. Uh, it's yeah. Robert, and he'd like to meet him. So it's it's been really great. Um, it's it's definitely been um, very significant as far as you know my next step with archiving and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. One of the key things that I got from the documentary was this sense of unconditional love. And this is what I really loved about the whole documentary. And it stood out from the beginning. And it was just something that kept me hooked in, you know, as well as wanting to know more about the day book and, you know, Mrs. Vera um, and the character behind that. But it just showed the the care and the nurturing between the both of you and and how that was represented so from my end you know I just really wanted to say congratulations on on depicting that because it was just absolutely beautiful to watch and the positive message behind it as well um thank you well that's thanks to Robert and his team um who made it look so beautiful I mean I think there's so much color in that film and it, it is such a true portrait of us and we, we don't want to shy away from the dark stuff, but yeah. we don't want it to define us either. And I think that's 
that's one of the things that was so rewarding about Robert's, the story Robert wanted to, to tell and the way he told it is that it reflects how, um, you know, how your photography and just the whole phenomenon sort of reinforces that, um, you know, acceptance um, yeah. of other people. It's almost maternal in a way, or like, it's like a hug from your crazy aunt. Um, <laughs> and um, so it's, it's always been, that's always been part of it for us. So I just love that it got captured in, in film um, so that we don't have to tell the story. It's told for us. It's great. Absolutely. Robert, in terms for yourself, how important was it for you to capture those special moments and that special energy, I guess, um, um, between uh, Michael and David? Well, I <clears throat> I really didn't have to, to to seek it too hard. You know, it just emanates from them and their their community. Um, the one thing that was interesting, though, was um, we made a short film first and it was just about Verisphere and uh, the the community group of costume aliens that march in pride and <laughs> we um when i when i started telling the story i to me i realized it was a love story you know uh, a complete love story you know first of all their love for each other and then their love of art and their you know the way they inspired each other to go out and make the you know create the the daybook photos mm -hmm um in a in a dark time and it, it it was just their love so i called it verisphere love story in costume and it was so cute because they they came back to me later and they they were just they were like well I, we never really thought about the love story part you know we 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 we, we just thought you know you 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 focus on you know the the costume troupe in in the parade and i think what we captured in both films was the 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 love that that runs through the love for each other the love for the community and the community loves them back it's hard not to capture all of that love while while shooting the film i didn't have to do much the interviews were were fantastic with the other people because they love david and michael and they love marching in in uh the pride parade with Vera's fair and you know the, it's it's just all about happy you know so it it uh it was pretty easy to to get that definitely so i mean for those viewers that are unaware of uh, mrs vera and the day book can can you describe i guess i guess to yourself michael are you able to describe who is mrs vera um the story behind her well, the story behind Mrs. Vera, well, she's Mrs. for many reasons. I mean, it's very common for people to say Ms. all the time. But yeah. first of all, it's Mrs. She's got a history. She's got a past. Uh, I like to keep that mystery there. But for me, technically, um, uh, it was a great way to get out and about and get some exercise and, and keep my brain sharp. Uh, aesthetically, um, in a lot of ways, Mrs. Vera, my muse, is my psyche. And if you see some of the daybook pictures, uh, she's always alone in the daybook pictures. And th th they are meant to evoke sort of moods like aspects of isolation, not feeling so great, feeling overly happy, but on one's own. Um, so I, it just, to me, was sort of like a mirror of how I sometimes felt. Uh, my health might be... Uh, how things might be going. Not it, not like I planned it, but I look at the pictures later in hindsight. I go, oh, okay. This one's kind of pensive. I like that. Uh, so I curate for, uh, uh, to some degree, a, psych a psychology of sorts, but yeah. the stories are completely open-ended. There, there are scenes from a, a day book. There are scenes from a film. For, for me, Mrs. Vera is always kind of simultaneously um, strategic and like honest and it's like it reflects reflects kind of how i feel internally that's my that's the guiding force behind the costumes um but um as a group or in public um you know the, the mrs vera it's it's sort of in some way it's sort of um people have a lot of expectations around drag um that are you know sexualized and she's an older woman 
an alien. It's she's really hard to define. Um, and you can see that like we I never really repeat looks, but you can always tell that like that's that's the same person, even if she doesn't look um uh male or female from one shot to the next. Um so she, you know, Mrs. Vera is a is a character that's, you know, very much based on who I am internally. Yeah. Brilliant. Were there any instances where sometimes where you're playing Mrs. Vera that you, you have to kind of channel channel her character? Or do you feel like it's just what I feel on that day and I'll just go with it? You know, it came slowly. Like we were very hesitant to sort of pin down a background story for this character. I wanted it to remain like this really open symbol because people would just see all sorts of different things. It's sort of like a Rorschach test. They they see what they wanted to in 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 trying to figure out this this weird art drag that they were encountering. Mm. Um yeah. Yeah, brilliant, amazing. I'm um I'm actually a screenwriter by profession. So for me it's all about the character. So I always think about with the background, what's the story and everything. So hence why I'm kind of digging in just a little bit deeper into into that side of it. But I guess from yourself, Robert, like um obviously being privy to this world and being able to show it, what was that like for you? Just kind of being able to see the background of, of character development and then being able to, to show that across to, to so many viewers of, of the documentary. Well, it was interesting, you know, shoot by shoot and different costumes, you know, I really did feel like Vera, Vera was different on different days, yeah. you know, the character uh, when we would go out, uh, it, it depended. Sometimes Vera was a little gregarious, but usually not. And um, but always, always available, always there, always you know ready for a pose or or ready to be captured uh, in the media. But, you know, and silent. I like that, you know, one of the characters says uh, she's like a silent screen actress. And uh, Vera just kind of, you know, moves along with the crowd and, you know, goes where you ask her to, you know, and then kind of um, evolves within within the scene. And it it's... Uh, it, it was a it was a wonderful time. I loved some of the opportunities that we got to shoot Vera being created. Um, you know, when David would put you know makeup on and costuming, and that that springs into watching people try on the costumes because you know we all come we all became Vera, you know, or our own version of Vera, or our own member of the Vera sphere. Um, my husband and I got the opportunity to get costumed by Michael and David. Mm -hmm. And the year that they were Grand Marshal in 2019, we actually marched and my crew shot it. And so I got to experience the Veras Fair uh, one time fully. And that was something else. And that was also the year that they were able to actually see the Vera Spear sitting in the convertible as grand marshals where they had always been a part of it before. So it was, it was a different perspective for them. It was kind of the grand big, big year of, um, of uh, excitement around Mrs. Vera and the Vera Spear. But uh, dealing with uh, the character of Vera was always, always wonderful. And then turning around and interviewing David and Michael out of costume was a very different experience. And hearing them talk about costuming and what takes them there, and then seeing the persona when they're in costume, two different things. So it was uh it was always it was always a mixed, you know, jumble of good time. It really was. I, this was the most this was the most joy joyous film that I ever made. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely, like when I was watching the documentary, I could see that immense joy. And to be honest, I wanted to be part of it. I was like, oh, I want to join in something like that. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, I'm not sure, actually, in the UK, if we've got anything remotely as similar other than the traditional drag, um, you know, events that would take place. But it's something that needs to be embraced all over, I believe. So, you know, it was just absolutely, it was great to be part of that world for that piece of documentary that I was able to be part of. Um, I know obviously like towards like the beginning, you know, it went through obviously talking about the AIDS epidemic and, you know, the treatment behind HIV. To go back and, you know, look at that and then obviously how Mrs Vera came about was that quite triggering for you know for yourself David or and even Michael for yourself for both of you uh, well we've we've sort of we decided long ago when we met that we um you know we weren't going to pretend things were better than they were but yeah. we weren't going to allow things to be any worse than they had to be um so it was um was always part of it to uh, seek that lightness while um, letting people see. I mean, you can tell from the character, even when it's fabulous, it looks like she's got some problems. You know, she's, <laughs> you know, even just in terms of fitting in her acceptance. Um, but she's got like a really great attitude at the same time. So she's, a, again, she's strategic for, for us, for, for me, and how I'm going to deal with all this, this heavy stuff but not let it end up defining me. And I, I love that the movie sort of, you know, captured that core um, uh, element of, of, you know, what was driving us to make these photos. Yeah. And I think also just um, the, the sort of persona of Mrs. Vera allowed other people to be different, allowed them to be other uh, and, and see what, what, turn them on as far as what they'd like to wear, what they might try on. And um, I think definitely also the metaphor of, of David as my muse and my moods uh, really came through for me anyway in the film that, that you know, that, would, that part of it was explained to some degree. I don't feel like we need to explain our work most of the time. We don't get too academic about it. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the key is, is working with people and community and uh, Robert captured it beautifully as far as that goes. That parade footage blew my mind. I was just like, what is that behind us? Yeah, I really, I'm, I like to give people an art experience they're not expecting. Um, and, you know, I want them to have a reaction, but I don't really care what that reaction is. You know, it's generally, it's really positive, yeah. but it's it's just, you know, it's just a way of, a very obvious way of not wanting to just be disappeared from our lives and our generation. Um, but, you know, to do it in, in as, as humorous and, and fun a way as possible. And um, it's also kind of interesting how the, the people that are drawn to it, um, you know, costume performance, it has like certain expectations and none of us are really stage performers. So I, I, it's kind of unusual to do this, this kind of attention uh, pulling, um, uh, drag and then not ever lip sync not ever perform we just we literally like we prefer to be in the crowd of like fabulous performers to make their performance more fabulous um but um so there's there's a kind of there's a surprising lack of ego i guess um especially with the other members of the group where it's it's just about being in that moment and not you know not judging people just just total acceptance yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And also with that create the the creativity, there are no rules to creativity. So and and that was definitely seen, you know, as part of Mrs. Vera and anything you do see. If anyone puts rules on it, then that's not creation at all, is it? You're just being a uh, you're living in a box, which we don't want. We don't want to be living in a box. Okay, excellent. So in terms of like the journey of the documentary, um, what has been the feedback? I guess from yourself, Robert. You know, you you may it you released it and then it went out so what what's been the feedback generally um across across the u.s well um it's not quite out it actually uh launches on august 1st 
Excellent. And okay. um, yeah, we're we're working with Gravitas Ventures as our distributor, and uh, our our first uh, launch, I believe, is with iTunes and Apple TV, uh, and will be for purchase or rent, and hopefully land on platforms uh, globally. So, I mean, that's the that's the hope, that's the goal. And uh, but as far as the, our film festival screenings. <clears throat> and we did a bunch and they were international. Um, and it was also the last year of COVID. So 2022 is when is we actual? started. Yeah, we started. Well, not just um, there were there were some fabulous things that happened um, in Oslo. They showed Mrs. Vera in a town square on a big outdoor screen mm -hmm. um, during their during their LGBTQ festival. And um so there were there were lots of cool screenings. We we played in a shopping mall in Portland. You know, it was it was kind of all over the place. And but but I have to say it was just resounding, um, you know, wonderful reviews. We we have not heard a bad review yet, and and I'm glad you don't. You know, I'm certain that they're they're out there. You know, there's gonna somebody's not gonna gonna respond to it like like we do. But so far, so good. And it was it, it was actually another director at a film festival that um, steered me towards my distributor and said, you know, we, you, she she makes very uh, she makes true crime documentaries. And so she was, you know, she was blown away that, you know, a film could be so happy and it made her so happy. She she, you know steered us towards gravitas and said you know you need to represent this film <laughs> you know? and i was like thank you uh so that was great we we've just gotten wonderful wonderful positive uh response i think the san francisco chronicle called us a triumph and that was that was the best thing i could have heard so and for us it's like when we speak to people who have just um watched the film um you know, you you feel this emotional connection, which is amazing for any artist um, to get. But um, one of the things that seems to be pretty common among their responses is that it allowed them to like reconnect with someone they lost um, in a more positive manner. So I think it's a really audacious film. Um, and, you know, I think it, it's in the, our work too, that, um, you know, you, you're making this about, you know, an, an epidemic is life-threatening things, but it's not, um, that's not the, the end point of the film. And, and, you know, we just want people to remember those that they've lost, which is so hard to do, but for what they loved about them instead of the tragedy of their, their lives, because it's just, I just feel it's a better way to honor someone is yeah. to, to remember what they made you love about them. And, you know, you know, Every AIDS story is pretty tragic, but there's a lot of them out there. It's not just ours. And, and people in all sorts of locations can really, you know, it helps them look at something that is easier to just not look at, you know, to just move beyond. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, there's so much psychology behind a lot of it, but um, the main thing for me is interacting with people and um, getting results, seeing what happens, being a part of something. And the other thing I was going to say is while the story is around AIDS, as far as I'm concerned, the series, uh, Mrs. Vera's situation, the psyche pertains to depression, yeah. uh, any other illness, any kind of isolation, self-imposed or not, um, is explored there. And the interesting thing for me that was really wonderful was Mrs. Vera went from being a singular entity to actually uh, a rather lonesome entity mm -hmm. uh, which was my reflection of how I felt after losing so many people just we're just wandering around what's what's going on today I don't know I'm turned out I, I can't think I'm overwhelmed or I'm in a great mood everything's great uh, so I think the thing is it's not limited to AIDS it's it's um it goes so much into state of mind well-being how we adapt or don't adapt and um, what we can give society and what we can take from society and 
somehow, you know, have this happy intermediate meeting ground where people get what they need. Yeah, like everyone has problems. Um, Mrs. Vera is just, it's a character that that kind of wears them like up front and center. And um, and also at the same time has this, this kind of great attitude and uh, sense of not being defeated by, by anything. Um, and I think that's a great message to offer. And also regarding, you know, how, how it's received, um, we recently had a screening, actually just night before last. And what I love, and I noticed, and I've noticed this before, but what I loved was all of these straight men that just run up and, you know, and embrace you and just, they're so, they're so caught up by the love and you know it 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 takes i i love seeing people just react to to their feelings and um of course you know women respond to it beautifully they they love the the romance and 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 the color and i mean that that's that's everybody i'm i'm, I'm not meaning to to be gender specific but you know you see these guys you never met before come into a screening and there's just you know a puddle of like you know emotion at the end of the mo the movie and i was struck by that at that at this recent screening it was it was just lovely and it's so it's so nice to see someone walk in you know with with an armor of you know society and and then respond to the film in that way that they've been very moved by it. So I love that. Definitely. And I think that's, um, it's just good just to see that change. But also, I think it's also showing that we've got a bit of Mrs. Vera in all of us as well, just kind of waiting to come out and just, you know, just to kind of be that um, that character. And, and, you know, just like you mentioned there, uh, Michael and David, you know, it was just about taking something that could almost, you know, kind of change the psychology of how we're feeling and just channeling, channeling sorry, that into another character so that it can it can bring out that love and that positivity and the fun, but also show that, you know, we, we understand that things might not be great every single day, but here's what we can do to bring ourselves out of it. And I think it was just beautifully done and, you know, again, depicted so well um, in, in the documentary. And, and again, you know, I just, um, I'm really excited for you and how this journey goes with the documentary, as well as more, more day books to come as well. You know, I think it's amazing. Um, do you tend to have specific dates for your day books or do you just kind of on the whim? We, they've always been, well, Aside from maybe Pride or um, a sure. Street Fear, uh, the, the regular, the day book pictures just with beer out, were always spontaneous. We just, you know, people go, oh, do you have an assistant? Do you have this, that, the other? I'm like, no, I have a point and shoot camera. We have natural light. Yeah. This is Vera, which is probably on makeup, which is theater, um, theater quality and incredibly opaque. So great for photographing. But um, yeah, we, we just sort of go out and do it. There's a spontaneity to it. Sometimes it'll be a mural that I'll get a shot of it. It's gone a couple of months later. So it's all a matter of walking down the street and seeing what we see. Oh, that looks interesting. Why don't you go over there? Yeah, let's get a picture. And when we started, um, like our health was not so good. So it was really the whole idea was like, well, what can we do that's just in a single afternoon for a commitment when we're up for it? Um, and that that really informed like uh, how we would work, and we would just initially we would just go out without you know a specific backdrop in mind, and just see what worked with the costume, what would ground it in in reality, despite being so otherworldly in, in appearance. And um, we just found that that you know if you wear all the colors and all the patterns, you will find a backdrop that that will connect to that. Um, and I love it when we're in out in nature, um, yes. because um, I just love the the plastic artificiality, you know, holding its own with the the beautiful organic, you know, dahlias, <laughs> lushness of <laughs> of the real world, and um, and I think that goes to, to positivity again, in that that we sort of were in a position where like, if not now, when, you know, we didn't we weren't expecting to have a lot of life. So we really, we really, you know, put our all in, into every moment of it. 
Um, and it, even from the very beginning, it just it showed up in the photographs, and I was astounded because we were just doing it to entertain ourselves. But we we knew almost immediately that there was a lot more going on to it. Well, there's also a recurring theme of if, if not now when, because oftentimes when we're working with people and they have never created something themselves or thought about it or felt like they're not creative, uh, it, it, they get permission to do it. You know, they get permission to do it. And, um, it, it just carries on that sort of authenticity, you know, yeah. that, that aspect of sharing uh, and, and letting people know, yeah, you, you know, you, they think you can't do it, but if you ever try, would you like to? You know, um, yeah. what will make you happy? Like, take a chance. If not now, then when? I say that a lot with the rest of people. And I wear that. Yeah, well, if not now, then when? So, yeah. yeah, creativity is a really undervalued currency these days. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people really respond to that, like, because it's so obvious, like, look, you're about to deal with something creative. You can see it like a mile away. Um, and then the that you know we always right away but like you can do it too it's it's very open you know people seem to think they need to like submit a proposal to join us and it's like mm -hmm. you know the only requirement is that you have the interest to do it um and so we encourage people to to actually you know get over their their assumptions about how creative they are or aren't and just just discover it absolutely it's excellent yeah and I feel like you know just what you mentioned there if not now then when and and that's exactly it and I feel like if a lot of us just actually thought that you know every single day how much our lives would be so so much different than, than what it, it the actual reality is because we'd be making so many opportunities for ourselves and not only that the happiness um that you get in the unconditional happiness as well um amazing anything else that you'd like to add to that Robert Oh, um, what? Well, yes, I would. Um, I mentioned earlier one of my favorite parts of of the of the process was um, in the film. You see where they have all the costumes um, in the garage and the basement, and the basement's connected to the garage. And um, <clears throat> and there's lots of racks of clothes and costumes. And David and Michael just have this uncanny ability to, you know, put stuff together based on getting to know somebody for a minute and seeing what they respond to and what they what the, what they like and um, what seems to get them excited and pulling things you would never believe. You know, there, we do have a, a picture of a, a gentleman wearing a big neck piece. And the dress that he's wearing is made, but with magazines as kind of like fringe. And it, it it's just wonderful. Well, while this shoot was going on, um, a woman was walking by that, that lived nearby. And we were standing outside and, you know, getting some air or whatever, just hanging out on the, it's kind of a back street behind a main street. And uh, she said, what's going on? And I said, oh, we're costuming or they're costuming for a um, for the Pride Parade coming up, you know, in about a month. And um, and we're shooting a film about it. And she said, oh, really? And, and she, can I look? And I said, yeah, come on in. Well, I mean, not only did she look, she got excited and she joined. Thanks I mean, she was just walking by. Mm -hmm. And it was just, and they got to know her and she turned out she did, she was involved in costuming of her own creations and pictures were exchanged and information and a try on and she was part of the group. People and, really want, like, at least in San Francisco, they really want this kind of kookiness um, all over the place because they used to have it. I mean, everyone here was creative in, in some way. Or another for a long time and you know we've changed a lot and i think people are really nostalgic and and missing um that artistic spirit that's you know so much part of san francisco's history yeah i did want to put out there that um we would love to make a book um of the actual photographs um have a book published about the, the photography the background story to some degree 
uh, and then about the group, because I've taken lots of pictures of the, the group as we march through the years. And also about the costumes, how they're made, what they come from. Um, so that's that's sort of like what I'm looking forward to trying Amazing. to do. And people ask for that a lot. I mean, they always do. And then it's like, it would be great to have. It's just, it's a little daunting for us to do on our own. And I think, you know, it'll it'll happen. The movie will probably help it happen far more than, than us putting feelers out for it um, because someone else is telling the story and then making the, the pitch essentially, you know. That sounds amazing. Well, I'm definitely going to be ready for that launch of that book. So uh, yeah, make sure I'm on the the um the top of that list for that one. Um, yeah. amazing. I mean, I I guess for for my like the viewers and listeners out there, where can we find out more about the documentary? Where to follow all of you? Um, just to understand the journey more and to be with you on that journey. Um, can anyone share? Your, I mean, Robert, do you want to share maybe some of the, the main sites or uh, social media that we can follow? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to look it up just to make sure that I have the right address. But we do have an Unabridged Mrs. Vera's Day book um, Facebook page. Excellent. And I believe, yeah, Mrs. Vera's Daybookfilm.com is our website. And I think if you, Michael, tell them your Insta page for, because yeah, I, well, yeah, I have I'm, so, I'm so old. My crew knows all about Insta. I'm, I'm still a, a Facebook guy, but um, well, well, um, more. first and foremost, um, um, I've used Facebook for the Verosphere group, which okay. is great. We're dealing with lots and lots of people. I know not everyone's on there. Uh, we, I also have an Insta with uh, Verasphere SF. It's a B E R A S P H E R E. So it's pretty easy to find. There's Verasphere SF. Then there's my own uh, site for photography, Michael Johnstone Photo SF. So there's a lot of crossover there. Um, if there are events specific to what's going on, I usually will post it on, on Facebook and then make some kind of graphic for insta um but yeah I, I i like using the social media stuff it's it's gotten people interested yeah uh people that had no idea we've made friends just from the photos just from you know the interactions it the does happen. you know we don't charge anything for our work so the, the reward is just in seeing people feel like they stepped out of the box for a minute and when you when you're not actively trying to sell something, um, you really just um, your presence is really just to share what what you've been working on. Okay. So we're we're not um, you know there's not like a huge amount of activity aside from the people coming to visit the page because they've seen it and they're trying to understand like what they saw and why they like. Absolutely, and I we like to so say yeah. yeah we like to say that free is the is the most radical. Yes. <laughs> it's very liberating too. It's like no, if you're not taking money from anyone, no, you don't really, you know, nobody has interests that you need to satisfy. So it's it's different than like the the gallery art art world where we don't we don't really seek out those shows because the, those people all have their their own needs and we just love the absolute freedom we have yeah. to do whatever we want and i think that's really unusual for for artists to to find themselves in that position where they have so much control over it definitely and you just make those organic connections don't you and that's what it's about so you know, and and i feel that again you know watching the documentary speaking to all three of you today is definitely showing that you know yeah free is the new radical the that creativity is limitless and of course just having those organic connections and just um again just being able to have that that flow between people and and that's where you know again that that love and that energy really does uh come to light so again thank you so much for being such great guests on the Mel Harry show I wish you all the best with the journey of the documentary and hopefully whenever I'm in San Francisco I'm definitely going to come down and, and say hi and I want to embrace Mrs Vera as well I feel like there's an inner Mrs Vera in me ready to come out 
we'll dress you up and we'll take a photo. That's Thank right. You. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Mel. You, Mel. You You're so much. welcome. Take care. I hope you enjoyed the show. For more content on social media, don't forget to follow at Mel Hurry Films on Instagram, or you can email me at themelhurry at gmail.com. Take care. Bye.